everyone. So today we're going to dive into the show text that PGM has by default. And while it, this is going to be extremely different from RPG Maker, it's going to feel very clunky compared. There are some plugins out that I will also get to eventually that have made it more like RPG Maker. However, it will never be as easy as RPG Maker. And the reason why is because PGM is focused more on localization. And we'll get into this more throughout the video. But I just want to show you what we're going to do. We're going to create an NPC. We're just going to change it, its look just on, with the default engine filters. And then we're going to be able to, when you're up to it, press X. And it will just have, this is a default show text. Again, I'm using default font, default background, everything. Hello, that log stole my wood. And then it will exit. You can't click in it when you're out of range. You can only click on it when you're in range. And also it will pause the game. So if we grab this log and we go over, keep it in aggro and talk to it, it pauses the game. So let's get started on this. And first things first, we're going to need to make a new group. So we're going to go to uh, group management in the settings, group management, and we're going to add another group. And we're going to call this group NPCs or NPC. And we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to have to make another video on group management because I'm real, uh, an issue came up with some of the things that we've been doing that are players. For instance, the particle effect, I believe we put in the player group. And it's, it's going to it's going to cause us a problem, but I'll do a separate video on that. We don't need that for showing text, but I'll just start with, uh, start fresh by making a new group right now. So we want to call it NPC. Then we will, and real quick, I'm going to delete this guy from my scene since you won't have him. You only have, you should only have this one. And now I'm exactly what, uh, your screen showing. So we'll go to objects now and we will create a new object. We're going to call this an NPC just because we'll probably just have this one, right? And we're going to have his animation be the same as the player. We're going to put him in the enemy or in the uh, NPC group. And we're going to have no hit detections for any objects. We're going to allow wall detections for player and enemy groups and probably NPC groups if we ever have NPCs that are walking. And then we'll allow wall detection for tiles. And we're gonna go to OK. And here we go. So the first action is gonna be him idle. <clears throat> the NPC is gonna be idle. It's gonna be using the idle image and we'll just default him to down. We don't want input, even though he's not an input object, we'll just say down just for uh, consistency. And we're gonna change them right away. We want to add a filter, apply a filter, and we want it to be this sepia right here is what I was using. And let's preview that. And sometimes it, it doesn't really preview real well. So let's just click okay here. We know that's gonna work. We can go to scenes, we can go to object, we can go to this NPC right here, and we'll add him on this house right here. And we'll put him at 200%. And we'll hit play. And you'll see that the filter did work. But it took a second to get in there. And that was because, if we go back to objects, go back to the filter settings, we put a time until completion. So we want zero so that it completes instantly. And now we'll see he's instantly like that when he appears. So now we want to have him when he's talking. We need a state when he's talking. So we're going to copy paste. And we're going to call this talk. And we want it to be the same. You can make him walk or you can make him do uh, stuff that other games do. We're just going to keep him the same. We don't need to apply the filter anymore and talk because <clears throat> once you apply it initially, it's always going to be the same. And he'll be going back through idle, in and out of idle as you talk, 
He'll always be applying it, so it's kind of redundant. You could have an initialize action to an idle, so it initializes the filter, and then the idle doesn't have to have the filter, so when it's looping like that. But it's not going to be that big a performance still if you have to click to get it activated anyway. So we're just going to leave it like this, simplify it. And we're going to add a link to talk. And we want it to be on a condition of if X is pressed. And we're going to do on press so you can't just hold it down. And I, we might have to refactor our sword swing and stuff to just be on press so you can't just hold down the button and keep swinging the sword. But for now, we'll just do an on press of X. And also, we want to make sure that it's discovered by the field of vision that we need to set up. So we'll just click that in there for now. We'll go to this object. We want a field of vision on this object. Hit OK. We want the field of vision to be called uh, talk range. And let's preview what the default size is. That's a little big. So we want it to be, I'm just going to say 50% less. And now let's preview it. And that's much better. I feel like that will let us get in range to talk. So we'll leave it like that. I'll even leave the color on for this one, the um, the aggro range visual. And now we're gonna double click back into discovered object and we're gonna select the talk range and it's gonna be by the player. Only the player when it's in talk range can activate this when X is pressed. And we just have to make sure all these conditions are met to do that. And then from, or actually <clears throat> we need it the other way from talk to idle. So I could delete it and then make it like this, or you can go right click on it and you can click flip link orientation and then it flips it for you. And we're going to say change unconditionally on this one because the input is actually in the show text to exit it. So we'll just say unconditionally to go back to idle. So we have a, a working loop right now. Now let's add the text. And well, let's just let's just do this first. It's gonna be a little bit just if you're from RM, just stick with me on this. It's gonna look a little weird. So we're gonna come to, to this third page here and we're going to click show text and it defaulted that because I had an original but we're not going to set it we are going to create a new one but I am going to copy what I did on this one so copy go back to our text one and we're going to paste it and I just said hello that log stole my wood because we're going to make a quest out of this eventually I think and we want the font to be 12 by 12. You can add in some of the stuff I haven't messed with yet. But for instance, here's the layout in motion. So we want this to be no time limit. We want this, you could have it just pop up for a second and then disappear. Or you could have no time limit and then an input is how you get out of it. Which is the normal way. Like for RM, that's how it was. I want the text color to be black. But I want the area background to be white. And again, these are all default settings. <clears throat> I know I'm going to have to make the display area a little different. So I want to go uh, 200 and we'll just go 50, I think it was. And now let's hit preview. We can see how it looks. Hello, that log stole my wood. So that's how it's going to look on the screen. And we want to center, center. So horizontal alignment, vertical alignment. Now let's preview it and see if it's a little better. Yeah, that's better. It centered it. Okay. Now there is an image resource thing. So you, I'm sure you can do an image resource. I've, I haven't used that yet. Hopefully another video will get to that. You can make background a little transparent. Let's, let's see what it looks like with a 10 or so. 
Yeah, so yeah, you could do that, which that looks fine. And then we want at the center of this object, we want to adjust it. We want to make it about, let's go about 75 pixels up. That way we can still see the player. So we want it above the player or above the uh, NPC here. And that looks good. So we'll keep it <coughs> at at that neg negative 65. Negative Y goes up, just like RPG Maker. Um, we can have it to hide object. We're going to do this, hide the message on a specific button, and we want it to be the X button. That's the how you leave this text thing. We want it to stop all motions, and we want it to pause the gameplay. And we want the position defaults to front most. We want it to also be plus the menu. And I've been playing with this. I'm not sure which one, but it seemed like one would not go above a layer and one would. So for now, I'm just going to do this. There's probably a better way for this, though. And that's it for this. This is how you would set up a basic text. Now, you have to play with with your wording and the screen size to get it right. I just happened to be playing uh, the last time I was configuring this, I knew what sizes I needed. So we're going to hit OK. And that's a wrap. We should be able to play. And when we go up to here, we can now say, hello, that log stole my wood. And then when you hit the button again, it leaves. When you're outside the range, it doesn't do anything. And when you're back inside the range, with the wall detection, hello, that log stole my wood. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we can go through this player, or this NPC, and the reason why is we have to go to our player, we have to click object settings, and we have to allow wall detection for NPCs. So we'll hit OK, we'll hit play, and now we have wall detection, but we are also pushing because we did not in the movement and jump, or sorry, in the basic settings, not push. So again, these are just small things that you just have to do and remember. So now we can't push him, and now we can talk to him when we come up to him. Hey, how's it going? Oh, you want to talk to me? Hello, that log stole my wood. <laughs> 